Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me this evening. So, I'll start, I already introduced myself, but I'll do it again. So my name is Paulina Korobkiewicz, uh, I'm a Polish photographer based in London for the last seven years. Um, and tonight I'll tell you a little bit my, about my practice um, and show a selection of uh, photographs from my key projects, um, at least how I'd like to think of them. Um, my work explores public space, uh, particularly in the urban context. Um, I am mostly interested in how um, the spaces we inhabit testify of our collective um, history, of our present. Um, my most recent bodies of work have been exploring how uh, the political system transition in Eastern Europe has influenced the contemporary uh, landscape and interiors in Poland, but also um, in Lithuania, as I was brought up very near the Lithuanian border. Um, and I use bookmaking in my process. Um, I'll start with my hometown. I come from Suwałki. Uh, it's a rural town in uh, northeast of Poland. Um, and it's a place um, surrounded by wilderness uh, with not much going on inside the town. It's a small place, uh, it's very monocultural, it's very uh, white, it's very uh, one, one, one sort of way of uh, thinking, approaching things, I would say. And um, I, I'm an only child and uh, I grew up. Uh, also in the countryside, um, sort of away from, from the town as well. And I always felt very isolated uh, in that hometown. And I think uh, photography was something that um, I became interested in very early on and it helped me uh, look at my um, environment and maybe sort of reinterpret my environment for myself. And um, by the time I was in high school, I. Uh, really knew that this is something that I want to do seriously in my life, that I want to perhaps study it. And um, by that time, I pretty much explored um, all the available resources in my, my, my hometown. My, none of my education it didn't really allow, uh, well, uh, leave space for, for fine art. And that wasn't a sub was a topic at my, my school. So obviously I realized that um, in order to uh, get accepted to university, uh, I was 16 at the time, and, and I just knew that from the conversation I was having with, with older uh, peers and, and uh, people who were doing this um, at sort of festivals, that it's it's an impossible project, a pro uh, you know, a process to get accepted to a film school in, in Poland, and and I need some sort of uh, good preparation. So I decided to join a very similar course, uh, like London Institute of Photography, uh, Warsaw School of Photography and Graphic Design, which was basically a part-time uh, course, a two-year course, diploma degree in photography, and I would uh, that was. Um, about 200 miles from my hometown, so I started commuting a lot. It was a weekend course, so Friday daytime I would leave uh, my school, get on the train, and, and go to uh, that um, course, that, that sort of university, part-time university, um, and that was my, my life and and for two years. So that commute um, that I was doing was about five hours on the train one way. So that was 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 mapping. Uh, every week uh, in, in those two years. And so um, I became really interested uh, in the landscape uh, that was uh, very immediate to, to, to where I was living, my parents' house. Um, and I guess um, the, the, eyes of the, the elements of the, of the landscape that uh, so early in the morning isolated with that mist uh, when I was uh, getting on the on the you know getting ready to go to to school or to 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 uh, go to the chorus to Warsaw, um, I was always just sort of hoping to have time to walk around and, and photograph this uh, the nature uh, so so near uh, me and and not have to um, get on the train again um, that day possibly and so. I was um, really fascinated with black and white photography at the time. Um, the approach in my, uh, on my course, um, that was my first real introduction to photography as fine art. So um, 
obviously I was really uh, interested in, in the dark room and I built the dark room in the basement of my parents' house and I tried to uh, experiment with medium format and this body of work sort of emerged um, during that time and it was my uh, diploma degree at uh, Warsaw School of Photography. This is another picture from that project. Um, and the decision to um, to move uh, to London uh, came to me sort of uh, not so not so immediately. It was very spontaneous. It was in my final year, my uh, my uh, secondary school, I guess, like A levels, right? I think. And um, I just felt that in order to um, at least have access and be able to uh, to 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 have a possibility to do what I want to do, photography, um, is my, I have to move away. And um, <coughs> I found out about UIL and I applied and and, um, and uh, I moved by myself when I was 19. Uh, and I didn't realize until I arrived how um, the, the, the process of, of acclimat acclimatizing, acclimatizing, let's say that's the <laughs> word, um, will take so long and actually will have such an impact on my work on how I uh, approach uh, approach it. Um, and the difference at Campbell College, the first sort of imme most immediate difference uh, about Campbell College and Warsaw School of Photography was that Campbell was completely free and it was just about um, us coming up with our own ideas. We were really invited to think individually first big difference between Eastern European uh, education, Polish education and Western education where uh, you're invited to, um, to, to, to voice your opinion and to, to really, it's, it's, it's all up to you, it's not about memorizing, it's not about really learning the facts, it's, it's really about now going and, and doing this thing. And I feel like um, these two years in Warsaw kind of gave me the, the, the understanding of photography as a medium but I knew that I am definitely interested in, in, in the actual medium photography. That um, Campbell really encouraged experimentation in terms of you know using photography as a starting point for certain ideas and um, actually um, not being the end product at all. And and for me, um, the conceptual approach was very exciting, and I um, experimented a lot. But it, I very quickly kind of find that found out that it wasn't. Uh, what I will be doing, and what I well maybe who knows, but um, a bit for now it's it's not what I'm doing. I'm I'm definitely interested in the images and their the physicality, and that's uh, how I sort of um, see my work, uh, deliver my work uh, in a way. So while I was um, at Campbell, um, I was making trips back home, and obviously uh, when I talked about just moving to a new place, uh, you, I'm a, I'm a very observant person, so I was comparing uh, the two environments, I started comparing the two environments sort of subconsciously, um, every time I was going back to Poland, I was looking uh, at, the, at the, the space that was obviously familiar to me, uh, in a sort of different way, uh, I feel like I adapted a uh, almost like an outsider's perspective onto the environment that I was very uh, used to uh, seeing, and um, and suddenly, you know, combined with uh, certain stories that my parents would say or, or certain things that I uh, was already very drawn to, um, it uh, triggered that uh, idea in my mind that um, this is something that I might want to be. Uh, exploring that this might be my investigation and um, to give you a bit of context obviously I uh, I was born after the fall of the Soviet Union so I, I don't know what a life uh, during the communist time looked like but yet uh, when I was growing up and when I was a teenager all these stories uh, from my parents generation from my grandparents generation from um, all the friends was something that was uh, present and it was always uh, very intriguing to me because although uh, the system has changed, uh, and that was before I was born, there meant what was left uh, from it, the, the public space, the architecture, the, the, the interior design, the, the decisions that people make when it comes to decorating their house or um, the language of advertising, it was all very much, and <coughs> to an extent still is, 
uh, left from that era. And so that just created a question I remember uh, wondering why things look the way they do. Um, and you know, we have to bear in mind that for 50 years people couldn't travel freely if you wanted to go abroad, your passport was held by uh, government, uh, governmental authorities and uh, without a letter of invitation you wouldn't be able to go anywhere uh, besides uh, the Soviet republics. Um, so my parents, when they were my age, um, just simply, you know, uh, they were trying to make some money, they were trying to go abroad and, and work in America. Um, for, for a year or so, and um, they didn't get let in. Instead, uh, they got a visa to Israel. And so they went to Israel on this very bizarre trip without really knowing what they're going. Um, but it became this sort of um, uh, place of wealth and, and these, these incredible things. And they, they, they brought lots of lots of slides uh, from their trip. And um, one of, uh, one of the times I was back home while studying at Campbell, I decided to project some of these slides uh, onto their uh, current house because the, well, the, the house, the idea of the house, the very concept of it, the reason why they emigrated uh, in the first place and then um, you know, brought, brought these pho photographs with them um, was the reason why I did it. But what really kind of intrigued me was the stories uh, and, and uh, the set, very particular photographs that, that they brought. For example, this one here is a picture of a motorcycle that they consider it so beautiful and in fact so, you know, they haven't seen a motorcycle, a Yamaha motorcycle uh, before, so they obviously photographed it to, to show their family once they get back. And, and these sort of um, pictures of petrol stations, pictures of uh, certain interiors um, of the most uh, bizarre things um, that not, you wouldn't just pay attention to at all. Um, that for me was something that uh, just triggered uh, some sort of interest and um, I started uh, exploring this and, and I really wanted to know why um, the public space and my environment looks the way it does. And so um, I started, uh, every time I went back home, I started documenting the space around me. And um, I was hoping to do it on film and um, in various ways I was approaching it, but I couldn't quite arrive with the, the right, um, you know, uh, the right sort of medium. Um, and it, was until, it wasn't until the last final year of my university when I did the workshop with um, self-published Be Happy, actually. Um, and I was invited, well, Bruno, um, the director of Bruno Cachel, the, the founder of, of uh, that platform, um, he invited us to make a zine um, in two days completely of the topic that we want to do. And before that, I just didn't consider a book as a form uh, like that. And so, um, obviously, for a zine, uh, I needed content. I thought I'll walk from where, I'm, where I was based, where I'm still based, um, just from uh, Peckham, uh, Rye Lane, to uh, Elephant Castle, and just photograph anything that uh, draws my attention. And for me, photography is about just these temporary creations that. Uh, it can be a certain light, or it can be well. But well, actually, at the time, it wasn't. It was just observational. So I just thought to myself that everything that draws my attention and uh, says something about this place, I will, I will capture. And so I arrived with these sort of photographs, <coughs> and uh, and I made a zine out of them. And as soon as I made, put them on on, on uh, paper and uh, printing them out and started to play with them, I, um, I became really fascinated in these uh, aesthetic, uh, kind of, well, aesthetic relationships that uh, happen apart from the meaning that is already in the photographs. It was it's, it's, uh, the, the play uh, on the shapes, on the transition, how the two images together uh, take on that uh, new meaning through purely the way uh, they, they work uh, aesthetically with each other um, and what it does and, and the fact that I had complete control over how the viewer sees the work that 
um, I can decide that now this image is first and then this this really uh, excited me and I just started making these uh, zines after that um, but Bruno really <laughs> said to me that the project he already knew that I'm, I'm for my graduation project I'm uh, exploring this Polish uh, sort of uh, I wrote here it, it was it's like a diary of transition um, and he said that I should do it this way and so I, I, I did and the next trips I, I did back home uh, I, I tried to photograph it this way obviously um, there was an influence here of other photographers and um, I was looking at Peter Berg's work and Nico Crino and the, the, their use of color was really fascinating to me because before I was, like I said, focused on black and white photography. So um, I arrived with, with, with this book. Um, this is an installation, a photograph from, from that degree show. Um, initially I thought, because I didn't think of making books as a part of my work, I just thought that this is a good end product for that work. Um, I uh, made it very large and sort of heavy duty. It was made, fully made of C-type paper. Um, it was lay flat binding. It almost was like a block of concrete uh, in itself. Um, and um, the book really explores, the project really explores um, the contemporary landscape, the contemporary uh, public uh, space. And uh, that feeling of, of being stuck between uh, East and West. So long years of fidelity to, to Russia and the, the new uh, devotion to America sort of generated this uh, bizarre DIY uh, colorful landscape that is sort of out of control and it's sort of um, there very temporarily. And it's, 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 it's a search for um, massive search for identity, uh, belonging uh, of, of the nation um, that, uh, you know, has been uh, sort of um, isolated, right, uh, for so long and suddenly uh, opened up to the world. Uh, and so the, the, the project is called Disco Polo and Disco Polo is a genre of music which I'll um, explain um, that for me uh, really uh, captures that sensation, that nostalgia, that, uh, that, that feeling of, of, of longing for something better, for the better world, right? Um, yes, and so this is one of the nightclubs in the middle of uh, Polish countryside. All this work is really uh, made uh, very near where I grew up, so I, I wasn't especially looking for these places. It was more like uh, I already knew where, this place, where these places were, and, and it was just quite. It was like a need to, uh, to to document them, to capture them. And some of them don't exist actually anymore, which is why I see this work as a sort of uh, personal documentary on. Uh, that very particular time in, in our history. So, um, this Copolo is a is a very well, sort of easy, uh, pleasant um, genre of music that uh, originated in uh, the 1970s uh, in the migrant Polish community in America. And um, although all the bands have very American sounding names, often spelled completely incorrectly, um, the music is always in Polish, or at least uh, originally. It's I hope now obviously the music is changing and still massively popular, but uh, it's slightly about something different. It's still very much copying, I, if I can say that, um, Western music, but uh, it, it was something different because obviously. Once uh, Poland switched from a uh, centrally planned economy to a parliamentary democracy and you know, it, the capitalist system was introduced, um, people were given, uh, given passports back, um, a lot of people migrate, emigrated, a lot of people traveled, a lot of people uh, went abroad and what they saw they sort of brought back. And um, what I started saying about Disco Polo is that um, the music in itself was always about um, that nostalgia for Poland being abroad. Uh, 
and originally, so the, the Polish Eagle in the 70s in America, they, uh, the, they, they were, the songs were sort of uh, folk uh, Polish songs, but reinterpreted in a disco party uh, way. Um, but um, later on, it started uh, being more of a, more of a party music, sort of like disco with Talo. Um, and yet it still embodied that very, uh, very, very, very longing, really. And uh, the reason why, I'm, uh, why I use the name is because uh, whenever I was, um, whenever it was summer when I was growing up, it was just everywhere. You would hear this music everywhere. It's the most popular uh, genre of music here at weddings, here at, at every party. Uh, it's, it's massively popular. And so uh, after the years of censorship, you could uh, record, uh, make any sort of um, music uh, album you wanted to. Uh, and disco polo music became extremely popular. And funny enough, uh, this music originates from the part of Poland that I'm from. It's Poland B, um, sort of traumatized throughout the, traumatized, uh, not traumatized, stigmatized rather. Uh, throughout the 18th century, because it's it's slightly less developed, it was always uh, through partitions of Poland. It was uh, belonged to uh, Russia rather than Prussia and uh, the the German side. So that uh, Eastern influence me meant that um, it just um, essentially is now uh, slightly more rural and uh, more to do with crops and less to do with uh, industrial industrial industry industries. And so. Um, a lot of people from that uh, area have gone uh, abroad to work, came back and then uh, had, had the possibility to open their private businesses because suddenly you could have one. It was not just government uh, ownership, you could, you could start your own shops and that was what was happening throughout the 90s. Um, so the spaces, uh, the fact that you know you could completely be in charge of your public space, or of your space, of your of your of your business. Suddenly, if you wanted to have a green roof, you could have one because there is no one uh, sort of uh, uh, restricting that. You know, the the communist time, the communist urban planning, although it was uh, really uh, dull and sort of grey and concrete, it was very much organised and and it was really thought out and every every sort of. Um, you know, a symbol uh, of uh, trying to rebel or trying to do something different. Individuality was really, really banned, and every, everything had to be the same. So, uh, people really indulged themselves with color, and I mean, like, not <coughs> not just on a very private level, but just sort of um, in you know, big developments, uh, schools. Um, yeah, so it, it was something that uh, created these, these bizarre aesthetics. Uh, this is, for example, a regional uh, sort of, it's a Polish restaurant specializing in uh, regional food called uh, McDonald's. And uh, it's actually called Smaki Donalda, which is taste of Donald. But it's just that idea that writing McDonald's will bring more clients or will, is, is, is something that, um, that is, is attractive, uh, really interested me at the time, and it still does. And it's um, in the 2000, in the early 2000, uh, these grey uh, tower blocks that are dominating uh, Polish uh, landscape, really, uh, all of Eastern European landscape, have started being uh, insulated with styrofoam. Um, and um, in order to sort of uh, disguise the uncomfortable past. I think uh, the urban planning committees uh, decided that it would be brilliant to paint these uh, neighborhoods in bright pastel colors. So, but unfortunately, as uh, there were some sort of more urgent uh, social uh, uh, problems uh, to deal with, um, I guess the emphasis on uh, what the public space actually looks like, um, that wasn't something that's, that's, that's important. So um, the way these tower blocks have been painted is completely random. In fact, it's not people who have education or uh, who should be the ones deciding of, of, of how the public space looks like are doing that. So um, what it does is creates uh, this sort of 
really eclectic uh, environment that uh, that at the time when I used to when I used to live there uh, I, I was just really uh, confused about I just don't know why 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 it's, why it's like that um, I guess it's also to do with sort of loose regulations on um, what can be built and how. And um, like I said, there was a certain, uh, the communist way of uh, designing the public space had a certain criteria, certain, there was a certain flat roof, for example, that a house and a town can have. But uh, once that uh, finished, and obviously people emigrated, they um, made some money, they brought, brought it back, they tried to build creations that they would be proud of, creations that they would be, uh, that would resemble Versailles in France, that would resemble, you know, Las Vegas, uh, Miami, suddenly, um, but that's something also about Disco Polo, that so many of these party uh, venues that the music is performed, that one of them I showed you, the Miami one in Bacalajero, uh, are called uh, these exact names, so it's Atlanta, Atlantis, uh, Paradiso, so it's never, uh, it's always that uh, that 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 nostalgia that is present in the landscape. There are never. Oh, okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. I was just about to say that there are um, the um, no people seem to occur in your photographs. But then, just on the last slide. Oh, actually, slide, this, yeah, this is this is just a do documentation from ah. uh, the book launch. Ah, but see, no, there aren't any pictures on the photographs, and it's a conscious decision because I feel like as soon as um, I've placed people in the photographs, the photographs became about the people mm -hmm. in those pictures, and for me. Um, I'm interested in the <coughs> gestures that we make as people. That what they what they say about us, how we what we choose to do with the space that we inhabit. We already take so much space on this planet that I think just what we do, uh, just what we like. Uh, I'm really interested in the taste uh, and why people make those decisions. I think that's for me that wasn't enough. That was enough, and and because I know the space so well as well. Um, I just wanted to really capture um, the landscape now. I mean, that was 2015, but uh, but now current contemporary uh, times. Um, what happened after uh, in in that gap, uh, you know, that transition time from that system to to another, from one system to another, and so. Um, I didn't really want it to be a criticism of any sort, uh, or also, uh, yeah, I just didn't feel it was necessary. Mm. Yeah, and do you rather have like a, a mm, sounds as if you're rather interested in the typology, let's say, like of architecture, you know, like influenced like by, let's say, like uh, maybe communist Eastern European influences, and then the basically like the 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 influence of or let's say Western influence and then how it then mixes yeah, and yes. society first norms. Do you also have like um, for example if you look at let's say like a photographer, let's say like Steve Shaw, yeah. So I mean someone who really at least that's that's what I sometimes feel he gets obsessed about seeing basically like he can get observed, uh, he can get absorbed in just looking at the scene from a specific angle. And when you look at this image, it's quite long. It, it really is like mesmerizing, really. Um, the, there seems to be an element of this obsession about seeing, basically, the, the, the being drawn in, into the picture. It's almost kind of mesmerizing. Um, I don't want to say that composition, but you know, it's a certain way of taking pictures, I think, yeah, that really invites the viewer really like to, 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 to look at the little details and to look at the the relationship of the visual elements within the image, would you, would you agree or is that rather let's say like a side effect, you know this mm, obsession about, about seeing and the, and, and the relationship of, you know, of the different details with each other? Absolutely, I think that's exactly what happened and in fact another body of work that I'm going to show you is about looking purely and there is no uh, other meaning attached to it and in fact 
this is why I think you know that the work needs to sort of uh, be there and, and say say its own thing. Um, but yes, uh, definitely looking is uh, yeah, that's everything. And so let me let me show you this uh, this project that I'm talking about. I mean, this um, this work I've. Um, Concluded in a in, not in, in a book that I felt that uh, was uh, basically because the first book was I was was just one of copy. Um, after my graduation show, when it came back from a, a photography festival, it was slightly uh, you know wear and tear problems, and I realized that uh, in order to the chat well in order to reach uh, the audience I want to reach and in order to uh, well, what, I didn't ask myself how to distribute my work, how I wanted to travel. And so I self-published, self-funded and um, launched this uh, second edition of the book, uh, which was challenging. Obviously, I designed it myself and uh, I've uh, completely did the whole, uh, everything about it uh, on my own. Um, and I launched it at the gallery that I used to manage at, uh, at the time in, in Cork Street, uh, which was very kind. Um, with a sort of a small show for a week and um, that was sort of uh, a culmination for me of, of that project um, but let me um, let me just take you to uh, another body of work which is that's um, this Coppola was also a part of post-Soviet visions which was um, like you say uh, it was the first time that I really uh, so into that last year, uh, selected images from this project were exhibited as a part of uh, this exhibition, group exhibition created by Ko Eshun and Anastasia Fedorova at the Gallery Cover 22, which shut down sadly earlier this year. Um, and it was the first time that I saw a whole generation of photographers, uh, it was 14 photographers, uh, born after the fall of the Soviet Union, but exploring what the reality looks like through portraiture, through public space, through different aspects of cultural aspects. And it was very interesting to position myself in that context because the, the, the latest work I've developed was very much influenced by, by what happened, well, by, by that very exhibition, in fact, and, and being in that context with these other people, because for me it was such a personal interest so far that I didn't even really um, look at my peers doing a similar thing. I, w I, w I wasn't looking at Polish photographers doing this thing. I was just really trying to capture these specific places that I wanted to, to show and I wanted to see. And again, it was a way of uh, reimagine, re 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 reinterpret my environment, uh, the, the environment I grew up in. But about looking while I was um, in um, London, every time, so this was the, the work I just showed was the work that I was uh, developing when I was making trips back home, but while I was in London, uh, I was working on this body of work called Perspectives, and it's a uh, photo book um, that I developed in collaboration with Campbell Press and Campbell College of Arts. Um, upon graduating, I was awarded a Campbell Book Prize, and what it meant was that for a year I, I would get to develop a project of my choice. Uh, into a book format with uh, a graphic design studio and support of these these people, these tutors. Um, it was a great experience and a very good collaboration where I, for the first time, um, worked with a book designer. So I, it was an interesting uh, way of uh, having my idea and then seeing how the idea can be reinterpreted. And so this was just about uh, looking and it was about seeing that uh, any sort of mundane everyday object part of our reality can take on a sculptural presence and uh, exist in a completely different way for for a second and it's about sort of exploring the city as I was uh, I guess, like I said I, I grew up in the, in the countryside so living in a city in itself was really always uh, something I really wanted and it was always a very fascinating experience for me I really liked uh, the urban environment and um, and this book is about that and this book is sort of uh, about looking around the, 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 the sort of uh, cor street corner uh, up the staircase seeing something that in half an hour won't be there because it's just a sort of a temporary sculpture uh, as such you know and so the book um, is made of different sort of sized pages 
and uh, it's got this sort of step-like quality, so it could almost be one of these objects that are featured inside. And basically, my just my intention was purely to extend the viewer's experience of seeing those images. So you would have to, you know, look for the gatefold or uh, the images sp spill over the pages. So, um, yeah. Um, that the that, that, that journey through 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 the city and it's about just the composition and color and uh, and that's what the book looks like. We, we launched it at the photographer's gallery bookshop in 2017, um, and these are some images from the the project. And for me, what was really exciting about this work was just that uh, I started looking at architecture in a way that uh, uh, it exists in so many different ways during the day. It takes on so many, uh, sometimes a certain light would uh, would hit this sort of uh, underpath and it, it, this creates this image that you only see at this one moment of the day. Uh, and as I was moving around London, I was just uh, taking, taking photographs. And this wasn't really, this isn't restricted to any particular uh, part of London. It's just uh, the momentary sort of happenings that uh, I observed and And um, this is my most recent uh, zine. Um, it's called Wall Unit, and um, it kind of, like I said, it sort of emerged from that uh, exhibition. Um, and I started looking at uh, just the social, uh, what's how was to say, uh, so socio-historic uh, roots of interior design. I I remember being a in, po in Poland and, and also uh, some photographs are also in Lithuania, but uh, it's such a it's it's the eastern region of, of Poland. It's really no difference. Um, I remember being in the post office with my grandma very early and just like feeling that I'm almost on, on a movie set. I remember the ferns, the uh, the rooms that looked like, that looked exactly like that. That although the magazines and uh, TV uh, programs or films would show the reality very different. This would be what the school looked like, or what the hospital looked like, or what uh, you know, um, any sort of institution. Uh, so the decor was very much left over, uh, and it's it's also changing. So that's that was something that really drew me in, but also um, it's that a testament to 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 to, to what happened. Um, and I always just felt quite alien in this environment, so it's it's the, like that's the sort of uh, way I was uh, thinking of this of these spaces. And what I'm really interested in uh, to today is is really just the fusion of the contemporary and the, the past, how it exists together and this sort of, uh, yes, this mishmash that, that, that happens and it's also a phase because there will be another phase and uh, once the remainders of this uh, era are erased there will be another time and I think uh, it's a very uh, turbulent time at the moment in Poland uh, and although you know, our authorities really try to uh, erase certain things from from our history. They, it really resembles uh, what the communist reality looked like and the absurd of it, and uh, and it's kind of and this kind of this work uh, is a zine because I was working um, on the interior project and I stumbled upon uh, this uh, abandoned factory in uh, Lithuania. And um, this was the beginning of a whole new body of work, which I hope to uh, have ready soon. Um, but uh, that's why it's a sort of scene, because I felt like it's an exploration that I wanted to capture in a f certain format. Um, it almost could exist, the tabloid format could exist uh, as, 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 as a part of one of those interiors, you know, it's like my granddad would read his newspaper with this wall unit uh, furniture and the TV playing after uh, he'd come back from uh, from his shift or, you know, it, it felt like it's, again, it's an extension of the content in a way, so 
uh, and a certain culmination because that that discovery of that new new work kind of put a end on 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 this work and um, at least a, a pause yeah, I would say. Mm. But yes. Mm. How how important is it for you that this is your your home country? Because you know, like uh, <coughs> in the world, there must be lots of places. I mean, including London. I mean, like like you know, I mean, for me, London is a place that's ever evolving. Yet yeah, that at such an incredibly high rate. Maybe not necessarily through a an event, let's say, like uh, the fall of the Iron Curtain, but, you know, it's like every evolving driven, I guess, really by, 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 um, by the market, I guess. And um, how important is it to you that, that this is happening in Poland, and are you kind of considering taking a similar approach to somewhere else? Yeah, yeah, like to a different mm -hmm. country? Mm -hmm. um, well, to, it's First of all, it, uh, I feel that because it's where I'm from, and very immediately where I'm from, um, I have a certain per permission to document this space, and I and I know it. And obviously, there aren't the photographs that are strictly reserved to that very particular place. But yet, um, it was, a st especially with this Copolo project, it was a starting point for a certain exploration, and I think, um, I am not uh, so focused now, maybe with the new work, I mean, but just generally uh, on um, that very historic uh, ident identity and, and the work is not so charged with that meaning because um, it's more about uh, the certain decisions that just, like I said, uh, sort of testify of, of um, of ourselves, really, and it can be uh, restricted to. It doesn't have to be restricted to any uh, particular place, really. Now, but uh, I, I, I found this. Um, I guess because I, I've, I became so drawn to photography so early on. Uh, I really wanted to capture uh, these certain spaces that. Uh, were somewhere stayed somewhere with me, you know that that school desk, for example, that was made of this particular material. That I, I you know, uh, the aesthetics are something that uh, I'm, I'm definitely interested in, and I look at a lot, and I look at how things look like, and I want to know why they look this way, and um, and yeah, no, it doesn't have to be back home. I, I, it's it's just, I guess that was the starting point, and. That was the beginning of, of that exploration for me. That uh, it started there. But again, perspectives is something that is completely moving away from from that. And um, essentially, I want to sort of create work that I can just continue doing throughout my life. And I think it's like a, a ever never ending topic. That what we what we like as people and what we what we make and yeah. Also, with these photos, you were saying that you you were, you were observing for all of them. Did you um, take photos of the scenes as they were, or did you would you do like a few little readjustments? All of these photographs were just um, straight as they were, in the natural light as well. Um, especially now, uh, I also work as a freelance photographer and uh, staging things is a big part of my work, and so. I like to, when I see something in the real life, capture it just as it is, because for me it's almost like a pure discovery, pure pure moment in time that just uh, was there to be found somehow. So, yeah. Do you think that, that in your, your, your work, yeah, um, how can I say, the, uh, do you know just by chance the work of uh, Tomoko Yonena? No, actually. Yeah. Um, Look it up. So she photographs the. Um, might have already introduced it at one point. She photographs basically like um, places where important events with historical importance have happened. Yeah, like a place where maybe a priest, uh, a peace treaty was signed, but also like uh, for example, there's a, she photographs for example a path that leads to a cliff where. Um, 
and we had Japanese families committed suicide basically by jumping off the cliff um, after the um, after the, the surrender basically like of the Japanese army. So entire families went to this cliff basically and jumped down with their kids and everyone basically. So she photographs a the path that leads to this cliff. And it's it's very interesting because I mean first of all if you see those pictures you you don't know, you know, without maybe reading the art statement or without reading like a particular, getting a particular piece of information uh, to contextualize this. But then on the other side, there's something in those images, there is an, how can I say that really, there is a, a resonance, yeah, or there is a, um, there's a latent, a latent, I don't know, events that you can almost like sense mm -hmm. or feel, almost like a, like a, like a, like a frequency that you can't hear, but you almost like feel it like in your stomach, you know what I mean, yeah? And, the, uh, and it's very powerful. Uh, and looking at your images, I mean, particularly like to, to the fact that there are no, no people in there, um, there seems to be like, there, there seems to be like a, a, a latent event in those, in those, in those scenes, mm -hmm. yeah? It's almost like as if an event or something has left a resonance in, in those, in those in those um, uh, in those locations, yeah, or in those places, yeah. Without being too specific, like what it actually is, but there's almost something there, like almost like a type of like droning, basically something you almost kind of feel like in your stomach. Yeah, I don't know if you ever had that. It's really good. I mean, that's kind of the the photography that I also really I'm drawn to and enjoy. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That sort of. No, I'm glad. It's very good to hear that this is the feeling. No, thank you. I mean, this is kind of um, the, the the work. I'm, and, and it's like you say, it's it's the uh, it's the ambiguity really of of those places that. Uh, that draws me in them, but um, yeah. No, I really enjoyed uh, doing this this work. It was just just because uh, revisiting these uh, certain memories and certain certain spaces um, was very enjoyable. But yes, I am definitely interested in um, kind of letting the work be more broad and. Um, sort of more universal and maybe less uh, site-specific and time-specific. But that's also something that, I mean, my, my, the, the project I'm developing now is very much time-oriented and very much about the post-Soviet uh, reality and what uh, that it, it meant. Uh, but, um, no, it's... It's a big part of my practice. I think it's a mix of both. I think it's the I always, you know, it's going back, making trips back, and then uh, living in a sort of different reality uh, has this effect. But yes, that's that's my my practice so far. Thank you so much for listening to me. <laughs>